Oh man, this thing is gonna look so good once we get some paint on it. So me and Douglas pulled the trigger on some cooling stuff so we can hopefully get the hot side dimensions done. So we got some stuff in. Uh, we got a Griffin radiator. We got some Speedway fans and a Speedway shroud. So this is a, was it three core Douglas? Yeah, it's a, no, it's a two core, inch and one quarter tube, uh, That's two core. It is, yeah. And it's three inches thick. So it's a pretty, pretty hefty unit. It's pretty beefy. Yeah. yeah. So it should keep everything nice and cool. Yeah. And it's got, yeah. So this is a universal radiator and we were looking at different outlets on each side and stuff like that. So with what we have on the car already, we decided to do a uh, lower driver and upper passenger to help alleviate some issues with the water pump as well as the steering box. So our goal today is to get the fans on the shroud and then the shroud onto the radiator. So whenever we get that done, we'll go ahead and show you guys what it looks like in the car. All right, got the new Griffin radiator all mocked up with the factory, I guess, mount or shroud, we even call it. So went ahead and trimmed this up. There's like just some tabs that came off here. So it's all trimmed up and looks nice and neat. Same thing with the little cab cutout but we got the shroud just sitting in there right now. So this little lip is actually going to retain the shroud and the radiator. And I mean, it's not even bolted in, but it's it's pretty snug, so it's good. So the only thing that's really gonna screw us is this mount right here, or not mount, but the uh, inlet or outlet for the hose. So as this is a universal radiator, it is not going to work with our steering box. However, what we can do is cut this neck off here probably a little bit past the fan shroud itself and then go ahead and put some pie cuts or just make the tube come up a little bit and over or straight under or straight in, in between the shroud and the uh, the steering box. All right guys, so I got the dual 12 inch fans mounted up on the shroud and we went ahead and used some riv nuts or nut certs, whatever you wanna call them. But that way, we don't have to take the fans completely or the shroud completely off, take a fan off if we gotta replace one or not. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the holes on the radiator for the shroud. So these holes will have some rib nuts on the back side of them. And then we'll go ahead and just put some screws in there. That way everything is nice and tight, everything is nice and snug. And more importantly, it is accessible and it is serviceable. So we don't have to take the top of the, uh, the cover off, I should say, in order to take the shroud off. We can literally just take these bolts right out, whole shroud comes out one piece. And like I said, a fan, if we gotta take fan off, we don't have to take shroud off. We can just take one fan off or individual as we need it. So as you guys can see, we got our fan and shroud combo mounted to the radiator with the same type of riv nut action that we used on the fans themselves. So as you can see, little screw or a little bolt, I should say, riv nut on the back side. Everything is nice and snug. Our universal fan shroud fits our universal radiator pretty damn good. So we're pretty pleased about that. So we're gonna go ahead and show you guys what it looks like in the car. All right, so we gotta ask you guys, do us a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and comment down below what you guys think of the car so far. All right, so Douglas got the radiator in and it fits like a dream, guys. Not bad for universal fit with a different brand shroud and fans and radiator. So we're actually able to still utilize the uh, factory uh, top shroud mount, if that's what you want to call it. Yeah, we just had to trim it up here and here like you guys saw earlier. Yep, just small, small little trim, but I mean, it, it'll it hold it good, so it ain't going anywhere. Yeah, we, it's pretty tight. We do have some rubber isolators for the bottom that are just going to help with any kind of vibrations and chafing on the bottom. Yep, same thing for the top. So what we'll have to do is put one of these here, drill another hole over here where we cut it out, and actually uh, put one of those little isolators yep. in. Let's get those little rubber nipples. But. Yep. But yeah, so this is what we're working with in terms of hot side for the turbo. I think this is going to be plenty of room. Uh, we're going to have to find a pretty intricate lower radiator hose. And this is that interference that we yeah. were talking about. So, so we're thinking about cutting it into three different sections. Um, so one and two cuts. That way we can basically turn those pieces 180 and then have it just make a nice gradual yep. 90 out. Or if anything... You know, I didn't think about this awesome, but we could just cut it at the probably, you know, let's say a 30 degree angle, turn this Flip end over and have it just go straight above the water or the 
There's oh yeah, have it come up. Yeah. We'll get to that road here in a minute. But like you guys already know, we got some stuff going on in the trunk and the floor. So we're trying to get everything coated and then also get the cage certified. So that is in the works right now. The trunk is probably about 90% done. All we got to do is scuff it up, give it a quick etching primer, um, scuff that, and then move on to the floors inside the car. Uh, and those are basically done. Yeah, so we just got to scuff gross. those up. Yeah. yeah. Just clean them up a little bit, get some of the old stuff off, and clean up some areas that uh, we should have kept a little bit cleaner than we did. So last week you saw us do some metal repair. Got our new trunk gutters in. Came out pretty good. There's a little spot right here. We can fill that in with a little icing. But um, we went ahead and POR 15 the entire trunk gutter just because there were some, there was a little bit of spot that had just a little bit of rust that wasn't really too bad to replace. So what we did instead is just prepped it up really good and uh, went ahead and threw some POR 15. Now, if you guys recall, this is the same stuff that we used on the dash for the corners. It's kind of like a three-step process. You use a cleaner degreaser, the metal prep, which kind of etches the uh, the metal. That way the POR can actually stick on there and it's pretty much a super rust preventative uh, coating. Which is also sandable. You can paint on top of it. You can do body filler on top of it. You can pretty much do anything on top of it. So when the time comes, what we'll do is just scuff this stuff up with some sandpaper and go ahead and slick sand or put our primer coat on. There's also the same stuff that we used on the dash and the firewall. Once we get the trunk jam all primed up and the door jams all primed up, that means we can actually take the car and go get the jams, the firewall, and the dash all painted the car color that we're gonna choose. But that's not the exciting news. The exciting news is I actually got in contact with a IHRA uh, cage certifier. So what that means is we are able to continue working in the trunk and in the floors so we can go ahead and bend line everything and paint the cage. But we do have to take some pictures beforehand just to show him before he comes down and actually looks at the cage. So it's really convenient and really cool that we can actually have someone come to the house and certify the cage without having to take the car somewhere. So first things first, we're gonna cut out these little pedestals that we put in for the fuel cell. That way we can mock up the fuel cell and the water box and see how much room or where we're gonna place it. Went ahead and took the fenders off, prepped up these four bars and painted them up with some steel it. So if you guys remember, we used the little door swing tabs and uh, I guess a little clevis. That way we can remove the frame whenever we need to. But like always, we sprayed it with steel it. And I mean, dude, just look at this stuff. It comes out so good. It literally matches the powder coat on the frame already. So just imagine the firewall and the cowl area just being this nice dark metallic red. Oh man, this thing looks so good once we get some paint on it. So back here, went ahead and obviously took out the little pedestals, took the nuts that were welded underneath as well, took those off. That way we can kind of start fresh. Well, this might be how it is. Right now I got the water tank mocked up on the driver's side, got the uh, Davis Craig pump directly attached to the box itself. That way we can run some lines straight from the pump out this hole and back through for the return. And then that'll leave us just with one less thing to do, like mounting the pump somewhere on the cage or on the floor or something like that. So, and then same with the fuel pump, we're gonna be running the hat style fuel pumps, either two of them or three of them, we're not sure yet, probably just two to start. So this sump inlet and outlet, we're not going to be using for the time being at least. So. Everything's subject to change. This is just a rough idea of how it's gonna sit. So what we'll do is actually, um, once we learn how to TIG weld aluminum, I think what we're gonna do is just TIG weld some, uh, some little standoffs, kind of like how we had, but aluminum obviously, and just weld them straight to these feet and perhaps maybe relocate this foot to the inside of the box just because it's hitting right here. Maybe same thing with that one. That way we have nice and flat stable mounting surface and we'll just run a bolt and a nut through the bottom call it good we were going to try to run the battery back there but obviously we filled up some room so i think what we're going to do now is run the battery right in this area so that's going to do it for this episode you guys thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode <laughs>